let's take a look at the browser in BlackBerry 10 on the BlackBerry Z10. Uh, when you go in, it has a pretty much standard look of, the, of a mobile browser. At the bottom, you have your navigation rather than the top like you're used to seeing it. Uh, you can tap right here and go to a website. So I could just type in mobileburn.com. And I tapped go before I ended up typing in the address, which is why I went to a Bing search result. Uh, and then I can zoom in and out, pinch the zoom. It loads a lot of content. It was pretty quick. And I can tap on an article. Uh, let's say that, see, there's a lot of stuff on here right now. Let's say I wanted to get rid of some of that. I could tap on the bottom right and click on reader mode, which pretty much strips out all the non-essential content. It loads the first image and it loads some text. So I can browse through it and just see the images and the text and I can browse through it that way and I can increase the font size or decrease the font size by pressing these two buttons. Now, if I wanna to switch to tabs, which it does support, I just tap back, it brings me back into regular web mode and I tap in the bottom corner once again, which shows me these are the four open tabs that I have. Easily switch to either one of them. Oh wait, I'll press the wrong one. brings me to this one and if I want to get rid of one and close a tab all I have to do is press the X on the right I can open up a new tab and once I do that it brings up my history so all, these are all the web pages that I recently visited if I want to go back to ESPN I can do it that way or I could have just typed in a, a website to visit and it would take me there as well uh, another feature is that you can add to the home screen so when I do that I get the option of changing the label it has the fave icon saved. So once I go back, you see that I have the ESPN icon as well as mobile burn saved as well. Now you're probably wondering if there's any quantifiable data that you can use to compare this to other browsers. Well, it just so happens that I have uh, three other browsers from three other platforms. So I'm going to launch Browser Mark on all of them right now and run a test to see how well this does compared to the others. So All right, pencils down. Let's see how each browser did. First, we have the iPhone, which is running Safari on iOS. It scored 1448. Now, this is 25% better than all phone uh, browsers out there in terms of performance. Next, we have the Samsung Ativ Odyssey, which is a Windows phone. It's running 1780. Okay, so not bad. Better than 51%. So this is better than more than half of all phones out there. Then we have the Galaxy Note 2, uh, which is an Android device. Ooh, and it really brings things up. 2366, better than 93% of all phones. So now you see that the higher end of the number, the better. So knowing that the higher the number is better, let's see how the Z10 did. Okay, let me go back. And whoa, 2382. So this was the best of the bunch. 2382 in browser mark. You see, the, the closest competition was the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. And it's interesting to consider that because, remember, this is a quad-core phone, the Galaxy Note 2, quad-core Exynos. This is just a dual-core Snapdragon device, but it still managed to best all of its rivals just with those two cores and just with the BlackBerry rendering system. So in terms of the benchmarks in BrowserMark, the BlackBerry Z10 was clearly the winner. Now keep in mind that the opposite is true with the SunSpider test. This measures JavaScript performance, and in this particular test, the lower the number, the better. So now we have the Z10 first, which has a 1963.4. So, okay, remember, lower is better. So as I go down the list, I have the Galaxy Note here with a 1054.5. Okay, so Z10 did worse than that. Then I have the Ativ Odyssey which is 1,506.4, so the Z10 did worse than that as well. Then I have the iPhone, which ended up being the leader of the pack, way down at 916.4. So you see there's a considerable difference, more than twice. Uh, the, the Z10 was half as fast on the Sun Spider test as the iPhone was. So, you know, the score is not as good there. The Z10 came up short when it came to JavaScript. So the deciding factor we had to look at was Ringmark. This tests basically a number of design languages on the web. It takes out Canvas, CSS, 
uh, JSON, uh, video, audio, a lot of things. It just tries it. So basically what it does, it goes on. If you pass the first ring, it goes on to the next ring and then the next ring. You try to pass as many tests as possible. In the case of the Z10, it made it to ring two and it failed 40 tests and passed 190. Okay, so you can browse through and see it did a decent job for a mobile browser. But in the context of the competition, how did it do? All right, the Ativas, it didn't even make it past Ring 1, so we're not even going to consider that. So we'll move on to the Galaxy Note 2, see how that one did. This one, it made it to Ring 2, well, actually Ring 1, I should say. It failed 4, passed 139, so it didn't make it to Ring 2. Now the iPhone 5 in Safari... It made it to ring one, failed eight, and passed 141. So when you compare the iPhone and the Galaxy Note 2 to the Z10, the Z10 made it further than either device. It's a newer browser. It did a good job with HTML5. It did a good job with CSS. So this is going to be a browser that can definitely keep up with the other options that are available on other platforms now it's not going to be as good in terms of javascript but when you actually use the browser on a day-to-day -day basis you actually feel it and uh my early testing i haven't had any problems it has moved quickly moved efficiently and i'd say that based on these benchmarks it backs up my gut feeling that this is a very nice browser you'll notice some interesting things when you go into the settings menu uh when you go to display and actions one of the things that will ask you if you want to enable Adobe Flash. Now, we all know that Adobe abandoned Flash on mobile, but RIM went ahead and built it themselves. So if you end up viewing some Flash content you know, on the web, like banners, they're going to be there. Uh, some video that hasn't been converted to HTML5, that'll be there, things like that. If you want to have like a kind of an incognito or private mode, you go into settings and privacy and security and you turn that on. That'll stop saving the tabs and the that you had open, the websites that you visited uh, in private mode. It doesn't show any of that. You have automatically blocked pop-ups and you can turn cookies on or off within settings. Uh, one final thing. If you go to a website and you find that you're not enjoying that the they keep sending you to the browser mode. You want to have the official desktop mode. That's an option that you can turn on and off.